What's up, YouTube? Weird day, man. I'm just recording for you guys. Figured I'd get a video out. A little down. Bye. It's Tip Tuesday! Looking to take your Madden game to the next level while dominating kids in Weekend League and learn high-level schemes from some of the best Madden pros in the world? Make sure you check out Hot Route Tips and use code CHAOS for 10% off at checkout. What's good, everybody? Chaos here. I'm bringing you guys our first ever Tips Tuesday. So for today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the top five coverage adjustments that you can make in Madden 20. Now, what that means is basically whatever the most popular route combinations are, whether it be a corner route, a drag, a hitch, whatever the case may be, whatever the top route combinations are, these adjustments are going to be tools for you guys to put in your toolbox to help you guys stop whatever those routes are, whatever people are running against you. Now, if you guys could allow me to sell out for just a second, there are a couple adjustments that I don't break down out of these five that you guys can find on our ebooks over at hotrod.tips. Now, you guys are seeing on the screen behind me here, I'm showing you guys that we have great blitzes over at hotrod.tips, but we don't just have great blitzes, we have great block shed defense on there as well. And on top of everything else, the most important thing in the game right now is run defense. We have great run defense. We're blowing up stuff out of shotgun. We're blowing up stuff out of iPhone. We're blowing up stuff out of single bag. We're blowing up pretty much everything, guys. If you guys are struggling against any of those things and the YouTube tips that I give out for free aren't quite good enough or you guys need a little bit more, make sure you guys go over to hotrod.tips. You guys can find these ebooks and you guys will have a ton of success with it. I can guarantee it. All right, now that I'm done my shameless plug. You ask me, you're the real seller. We can now get into what this video is all about, and that is the best coverage adjustments in Madden 20. Now, I do want to note, once again, there's two that I'm leaving out that I've saved for our eBooks over at HotRoute.Tips, one of which is going to really help you stop the run. Also, for you guys, just to help you guys out, I'm going to do timestamps for you guys for each coverage adjustment. So we're doing five, the five best. I will put one through five down in the timestamps for you. If you guys like to skip around, if that's what you guys like to do, I have that for you so we can do that now let's get into it before we get started i do want to give you guys a like goal if we get 300 likes in this video i will continue to bring you guys videos like this each and every week that help you guys lock up your opponent and get more wins so the fifth best coverage adjustment in madden 20 is the bluff blitz now the bluff blitz can be used in a various amount of ways now you guys see here i have two slot corners that are blitzing it's the only way that you can get a three wreck on the field and i'm going to show you guys that through the bluff blitz i'm going to do a couple adjustments here and i'll just leave the one blitzing corner that i want you guys can see from there so here's the defense i have one blitzing corner left on the left now the one that's in a bird hook on the right was blitzing as well so you also could get him in a three wreck but it doesn't matter the play guys i'm in 146 right now but if you're in db fire out of dollar if you're in tampa 2 out of 335 anything with a slot corner that's blitzing like this you can audible him with a bluff blitz to get a three wreck out there now that's the only way so you see here i have y right stick to the right bluff blitz that's the only way to get a three wreck on the field there's no other hot rod adjustment for that. So if I pull up this other linebacker here, you see I have mid read, curl flat, hook curl, and middle third. And if I pull up the corner on the right, I have the bluff blitz because he's able to get the three wreck on this play because he was also blitzing. But you see the initial adjustments, it's just vert hook, hard flat, curl flat, and seam flat. There's no way to get a three wreck. Now what I consider the three wreck zone to be is pretty much the underneath killer. It takes away drags, it takes away hitches, it'll take away zigs initially. It, it does a really, really good job of taking away any of those underneath routes, allowing you to worry about any of the deep stuff. So I'm in mesh post here. Just a common play, double drags with a post. You're going to see this direction going to play really well across the middle of the field and basically take away all the drags underneath. And you see, he just kind of sits in a perfect spot and he sits so low and that's without even any shading. I didn't shade down or anything. It just does it on its own. He just lurks low and actually sits underneath these drags where if you throw them, they're actually picks like, so this is a pick early on in the throw and then he carries it. You can't throw this one yet. Maybe you can fit this one in, but I'm probably, if I'm actually focused on lurking, lurking this a little bit longer and then moving back. Now, it's not just a play to stop mesh posts, right? This is just a perfect example for you guys of it taking away a drag, right? And I'm gonna show you guys now, just to, just to show you guys that a mid read is not gonna do the exact same thing. So let me reset this back up and I'm gonna have a mid read out there. Now you guys see I have a mid read and I'm gonna put the same exact setup and you're gonna see these drags are gonna get underneath it and you actually can throw it but you actually don't even guard the post either so let's go back to the replay here if I don't use it this post you can throw it so it's not like the mid read oh like well the mid read covers the post not really you can easily throw this over the top of it and it still doesn't guard the drag so I can throw this right here with a pass lead up nine times out of ten can usually pass that and then it's also not gonna match it so if I'm not using it 
you can still pass it right here too just fit it in this perfect pocket right here and the mid read really just kind of stands there and doesn't do too much while the drags underneath just go wide open so that's just something to note why i like the 3x so much because of how low it lurks now i'll just show you guys another setup here quickly out of mesh post bam right there you're gonna see this three rec do something pretty well it's gonna probably go over to this hitch here and make a play for you so the exact same defensive adjustments hike it here and you see it goes all the way over to that hitch now you have a bird hook there that would have taken that away anyways but say you don't have a bird hook there it can bait you into throwing a pick and i actually have a clip i'm gonna show you guys a small short little quick montage of just four clips of bluff blitz is making plays for me and they don't see this guy lurking across. You see how low he's lurking? You can't even see him half the time, and all of a sudden, bam, you throw that hitch. Imagine this vert hook is in here, and he jumps this and picks it off. So that's just something to note there of how good 3Rex really are. Something that you can note here, I'm audibly into cover two sync, is you can bluff blitz vert hooks. You see this vert hook right here? If you bluff blitz them, you can bluff blitz the vert hook. And I do use that every once in a while, because again, usually when you bluff blitz them they take a couple steps down it's not always it's a little weird but they should take a step or two down and the guy thinks that they're blitzing and they'll throw right at it so let's see if i can get him to do on this vert hook he takes like half a step there and bounces back now if they're getting if they're afraid of pressure they might just instantly throw that drag right into your vert hook if they see him take a step down because they're just going to register in their mind that he's blitzing now sometimes they take even more steps but that little that little hitch you guys would be surprised will throw you off a little bit so that's just a note now i will get it i'm gonna show you guys here a montage of a few picks from this bluff blitz showing you guys the potential that it has and then we'll get into the fourth one So for our fourth adjustment, it's gonna be the audible. So different plays are gonna react differently based on what players are doing what things with that certain play. So looking at linebacker cross three show two, it has a loop blitz. That's gonna cause the inside linebacker to take a step in. On other plays where a linebacker is doing a straight blitz, he might take a certain angle, take a different step, do different things. Now these steps might seem minuscule, right? But there's certain plays where maybe it helps you stop the run. And we actually have a play over at HotRod.Tips that we're using at a 3-4 odd to help stop the run. But we can audible to a different play to get a different covered shell, but react the same way to the run defense because of that audible. So I'm going to show you guys here what I mean. So I'm calling linebacker cross three show two, and you see McKinney takes these few steps in, right? Putting him in that position for that crossing loop play. Now, I'm going to call a different play here. I'm going to call Tampa two or uh, cover two sink, and you're going to see that he does not take that step call here yeah cover two sync that's perfect and we can just go back to let's go back to bunch just to keep the same exact alignment keep the same look so you guys can see it so you hear you see here he doesn't even take that step and they're completely aligned differently right now even if you base align it this guy would probably move his practice mode's weird but he doesn't take the step in like he does before okay so now the third step of this i'm gonna audible from this uh looping blitz into Tampa 2 or cover 2 sync and you guys are going to see that it's going to keep that same alignment but you're going to have a different coverage show. Now that might not be the biggest deal so you see here he's still stepped in but he's no longer looping. Now it's probably not the big deal on Crossfire. In years past when Crossfire was a very very good blitz it helped hide your blitz but this year it can be used for different things so maybe you have a run defense out of one coverage it only works out of cover two it only works out of cover three it only works out of cover one but you want to use a different coverage shell but you want that same run defense to work you need that linebacker to do the exact same thing that he does in the other play you can call that audible into your other play and keep that alignment but change your shell up another example we have a blitz on hot route where we like our players to do a certain thing but you can only call one play on it now if you call that play you can audible into a different coverage shell but it can still react the same way because the guy's still aligned the right way I hope this makes sense to you guys. If you guys have any questions on it, let me know in the comment section. But this is a very underrated thing that many, even top players, don't take advantage of. I think you guys need to start doing that. And for more explanation on it, I'm telling you, you can go to hotrods.tips. 
I hate to keep plugging to you guys, but I do give away a lot of free tips on YouTube, but there's even better stuff available to you. Let's get into the third one. For our third adjustment, I'm gonna be showing you guys the deep third. Now, I've talked about this before, so it might be a little bit of a review for you guys, but the deep third on the outside is gonna help you guys stop corner routes, and it's gonna help you stop posts. Easily the two most popular routes of Madden year after year. So we'll start with the corner route here. You guys see I'm gonna cover two. I'm just gonna baseline press and put this guy in a deep third, put this guy in a deep third, right? Now, I'll put this guy in a hard flat, and I basically created my for myself a cover six look, if you will. I have a cover three on the right, and then I have a cover two on the left. Now, I'm, I'm in Z spot here, and you guys are gonna see, I'll just do this or whatever, this corner route, which usually gets over cover two, is gonna get matched by the deep third. Now, even with the streak, I'll show you guys in the, the second one with the streak, the deep third's still gonna do a good job of matching it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hike the ball here, and you guys are gonna see this deep third gets matched on the outside, and if I try to throw that, it's a pick. Now, he matches like a little bit late, which is even better. You might say like, ooh, I might have been able to fit that in there. No, you would be throwing a pick. So watch this here. On this corner out, you might throw this right here. I'm telling you right now, this guy breaks back so fast, especially post-patch, guys. We had a patch on zones that makes the react faster. This thing is a pick. Now, I'm going to do it with a streak, and I'm going to show you guys that I can click on and make the play. And that's using two controllers. It's not even using just one. Uh, like so I can click on with perfect timing. I'm not even gonna get good timing. I'll still make a play on this ball So I'm moving this guy out And you guys see I have my cover six look again now We're in Z spot with a streak. And I'm gonna throw this corner out and I'm gonna show you guys that I can click on and make this play now I was very very close to it. I didn't quite have the timing I'll try to show you guys it again, but this route is not very open if I get good timing I will pick this ball off or at least get a swat on it So one more time here create my cover six Bam, here we go. And you guys are gonna see, I will be able to get out there. Now I'm gonna try to do my best with my quick hands here, but throw RB, and there you go, that's it. Now, you guys might say, oh, you're not doing you're not doing the perfect timing on the throw, whatever, whatever. You guys don't have to trust me. It's just gonna hurt you. I'm telling you right now, if you put a deep third out there and they don't motion out this streak, you will lock down this corner route. So you guys are seeing here, I'm, I'm having to switch controllers and I pass led this to the right, and I'm still able to click on and easily make this play. I can maybe throw it a second earlier, but I'm telling you, with, with me just using one controller, I will be able to click on and pick it off. You just gotta take my word for it. It is what it is. Now I'm in mesh post. Same concept here. I'm just gonna block the running back like I did was, was doing before, and I'll set this up this way. So if I put a deep third over here on the left, and then put this guy in a middle deep third, put this guy in a hard flag, creating our cover six look once again, just gonna blitz this mid read just to get him out the way because I'm gonna be usering for a second. So they hike the ball here, and you're gonna see that this uh, post route is gonna get guarded by this deep third. You can't throw that post against deep thirds, it's gonna get picked every single time. Let's just look at it right here. I don't even have to throw it, I don't even have to exemplify it for it. I'm not gonna waste your guys' time. Look at this deep third, how he squats really well underneath, just squats, doesn't just go back like the other guys. You see these guys getting pushed back by this post on the other side. He's not, he's waiting, squatting waiting for this post to be thrown if you throw this post it will 1 million percent get picked i'm telling you right now i'm not even gonna waste my time throwing it to you you guys can clearly see it let's get on to the second adjustment all right so for our second best adjustment it is going to be the soft squad now i arguably almost put this at the first one it was very very close it plays very very well the reason being that it's going to play like a cloud flat so you guys see how i'm in a normal tampa 2 i'm gonna put this soft squad out there it's gonna play like a normal cloud flat if there's a flood concept so i'll just call corner strike it's a flood concept over there, corner route, C route now. Don't worry about the C route looking weird. I don't know why it's like that. It's gonna just run a normal C route. And you guys are gonna see, he's gonna play deep like a cloud flat wood. He's gonna take away the corner route and they can obviously throw the thing underneath, just like a cloud flat wood, right? Now the difference is when they actually only send one receiver out. So I'll show you guys corner strike one more time here, just to show you guys he'll rally to the ball and the running back will probably be like four or five yards. You throw, the, you throw that route. Now, obviously I'm using two controllers, so I didn't get up field. That's probably two, three, four yards, like a cloud flat would. Now here's the great part about a soft squat. You can trust it to play its cloud. If they flood his side of the field, he'll play the way that you want him to play. But if they don't flood it, so if they only send one receiver out on that side, so I'm in mesh post now, He's gonna match this drag and do a really good job of it. The reason for that is that you can trust him to play, you can trust him to play the man-to-man -man in a really good way because he doesn't match right away. He doesn't just, okay, I'm a man-to-man. -man. 
he waits just like a millisecond to see, okay, is the running back going out? Do I need to worry about him? Okay, no, I don't. He's blocked. Then I can match to him. So one second. Okay, let's man up. And then he chases him. And that's a really good job. That's against, that's Bradley Roby against Antonio Brown. Probably one of the best receivers in the game. Now, they have his number wrong, but that's Antonio Brown. But you guys can see, he, he boxes that. You can't throw that, right? So that's what a soft squat does. It's going to match for you on the backside now. Antonio Brown does mismatch him here, so he probably will burn him on this deep attack. But just so you guys can note, like, it'll do a good job against post usually too. That that one second he takes to man up will usually help you to make a play, like, to help him to make a play. And then you can shade inside, outside, do whatever. But you guys are going to see here, it does a decent job most of the time against post as well. So it takes a second to man up, it mans up, and that's a tough throw to make, to be completely honest with you. Maybe you can lowball it on the break. I probably would. But if they don't make that instant read, he's boxed after that. So that's what the, the soft squad really offers you so many different things. I'll probably, if they have an ISO, if they come out on any type of trips, like a, a wide trips, the one out of Saints, the wide trio, uh, bunch, anything like that, I'll usually put a soft squad. So if they put something into his zone, he'll man up the way I want him to. And he'll take that, he'll just basically take that route away. And I can worry about the one, the trip side of the field. Or if they send the running back out and flood him with a corner strike, a wheel curl, anything like that. He'll play the cloud flat and I don't have to worry about anything over the top. He'll just rally to the ball and, to, and take away after a few yards of gain to the running back. So you guys see, this is probably pretty tough to throw. You can probably throw that low ball right there, but after that, bam, you probably can't throw this anymore. You'll get a SWAT animation. So that's what I really like about soft squats. A lot of different things you can do with them. They're very versatile. And now let's get into the final best adjustment. All right, guys. So we have our best coverage adjustment in Madden 20. Do -do 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 now, I know it's going to be a little bit anticlimactic, but the best adjustment in Madden 20 is man-to-man. -man. Of course, man-to-man -man is so good this year. The pressing is great. The sticking to guys is great. It's just so useful in so many different ways. It takes away so many different routes, and I'll show you guys that in a second. Again, I know I've been using Bunch for a lot of this, but the, the concepts are all universal, guys. 3x are going to take away underneath stuff. Deep thirds are going to help you with corner routes. And man to man is just gonna box stuff for you. So I'm gonna show you guys here mesh post. We'll just start with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press here with Roby and I'm gonna man him up on Antonio Brown. I'm gonna shade down, shade inside, and watch against against probably arguably the best receiver in this game. Top three, top four at least. Bradley Roby's gonna do a great job of locking this up. So just watch here on the left in man to man. He presses Antonio Brown and literally does not let him go anywhere. Bradley Roby, it's not Stefan Gilmore or somebody that's like out of this world good, guys. He's not anything crazy. He's not an X Factor. He's not a 99 overall. But he takes Antonio Brown, a great wide receiver, and literally puts him into the dirt. Watch this here. He does not let him move. Double press, press again, bumps him, and he doesn't have a single ounce of space. You can shade underneath and take away anything like that. Again, we'll go to here like corner strike. So I'll do the same thing here. Man him up on X, shade inside, man press down, I mean uh, shade down. You guys are going to see here, he's going to do a good job against against this, against this the C route. You can't throw that because he's underneath it. You literally just click on and take it because even though he gets beat on the press, you can literally undercut any of the C route here. So you guys see it right here. He beats him off the press, right? He doesn't press him well. Try throwing that. I guarantee the guy cuts it off and picks it because he's so far underneath it. Again, another one that you can do, deep attack. Now, if you are shading underneath, you have you do have to worry about streaks. That's why you can keep the deep uh, the deep half over the top, and then if they streak, it doesn't really even matter. Now, deep attack might beat him because Antonio Brown has such good route running here. But you guys see, he gets pressed pretty well again, and you might be able to throw the ball on that break, but he quickly catches back up to him, and there's a very small window where you can throw it. Man-to-man -man is just working very, very well. I'll show you guys again here on Z-Spot, similar concept here, just going to man up and shade underneath uh, on this on this corner route, and you guys are going to see here, it's going to do a great job against it. And it's Julian Edelman, he's probably the best route runner, or one of the best route runners in the game, and you guys see here he doesn't get an ounce of separation from man to man. That's not even any shading, that's literally just manned up and taken away. So watch here, my corner even gets bumped by his own linebacker, giving him a little bit of separation. Watch how quickly he closes this. Bam, right back on it. Nowhere you can throw this. You can easily click on and undercut that and pick it off if they try to throw it. Man-to-man's the best thing in this game, guys. 
I'm not going to front and try to make up some better adjustment because it's just not. The man-to-man -man is the best adjustment of the game. You need to be using it. You don't have to run two man under or cover one hole every play. You can man up sparingly, but you need to be using it. So I hope this was a helpful video for you guys. Let me know. Like, comment, and subscribe. Do all the things you do. Take it easy, guys. Peace.